This time on Pedalbox, we're heading north to decimal tenths to have some work done on the VR head and get the injectors tested. So the first thing we're going to get on with after I finish this nice cup of coffee that Nick made me, um, we're going to get this uh, head cleaned out and use this walnut decarbonizing machine to clean out all the coke and all the loose deposits from the exhaust runners. Now, they're not looking horrendously bad, but whilst it's off, it might as well all get done. So we're going to do that and get that stuck in. And I'll show you the afters once Nick's had a proper go at it. But here's a couple of before shots in the meantime. There's a good layer of carbon built up on all the exhaust ports. Who knows the last time these were properly cleaned, but it certainly hasn't been in my time with the engine. And the decarbonizing should knock all of that particular off and then suck it right back out again. So you can see on this port that's already been done, it's much smoother. There's just a little bit of soot left in it. This one is really rough looking where it's not been cleaned down. So all that coke's gonna come off the head and we'll get that cleaned up now. Comparing between the first port and the second port, you can really see the difference between the two before and after. Although the second one's only had one quick pass, you can really obviously see where the particulate is stuck to the wall with all of its sharp edges. After another run, almost all the carbon is off and what's left will pick off nice and easily with a wire brush, given it's right next to the outlet. You can check out Decimal Tenths on Facebook and Instagram, as well as their website, and they have a great YouTube channel. Nick's got a great build on his old car, the Furious Frog, which was a Lupo, and now he's got a Mark V GTI after the Lupo unfortunately met a barrier at Croft. Finally, the exhaust mounting face gets a quick skim over with a soft wire brush to get rid of any debris and scale. Well, it's all the ports cleaned on the head now, and it is looking really, really good. Much, much better. My hands actually don't come out covered in black soot once I try and feel around inside the ports, and it's so much smoother as well, as you'd expect from having all of the guff taken out. Now, the walnut machine itself is really, really clever. It's just got a hopper in the bottom filled with uh, ground-up walnuts, and they come out of this tube into a little gun on the end, and they just go, and you poke it through the end of this into the inlet, and then you work it round, and you just clean off all the carbon deposits. Now, if any of the walnuts get through into the cylinder head, uh, into the bores, sorry, it's not really a problem because they burn up instantly. Walnut is, it's obviously it's an organic thing. It just burns up nice and quickly, so it doesn't cause any problems. And it's not abrasive enough. It's not going to scratch anything. It's not going to damage anything in either the cylinders, the pistons, the head, anything, anywhere. It will just basically vaporize away, which is really, really good. So it filters out all of the carbon deposits as it comes around, goes back into here through the vacuum and goes through this filter in the top and all of the deposits sit in the very top of the machine, the big pieces that have come off, like these big chunks of carbon that you can see in my hand, and all of the useful stuff, all of the um, small pieces of walnut, drop back down into the bottom, and they just get recycled round and round and round. And when it's looking a little bit dirty, because there's obviously some small parts that will get through and just loop through the system, you just clean it out, put some new stuff in, and you're good to go again. So this is a really, really good machine. And you don't have to take the head off in order to do it. So you can do it in situ because it blasts in and obviously pulls all of the bits back out again. So it's a really worthwhile thing to have done every now and again. So next up, we're going to do the injectors, and we've got them all rigged up on the machine. We're going to do a test on them first to see what they're like, give them a clean, and then test them again. So this will be really interesting to see whether or not this is uh, one of the problems I've been having on the engine, where it's had a bit of a cough. Just rule out yet another possible thing that's spoiling my enjoying of the car. So you can see the injectors themselves, whilst they're fairly clean at this end and at the very top where the fuel's been going in, where they've been sitting in the uh, head, they're actually quite crusty and they're not looking so great. So it could be they've been in there a long, long time. I mean, they've definitely been in there the full 10 years, 12 years that I've had the car. But they've probably been in a bit longer beyond that as well. So hopefully this will have a bit of an improvement and we'll see what they're going to be like when we test them. We'll do that now. The injectors are connected to a loom, much like they would be in the engine, and then loaded into the test stand. The system pulses each injector as if it was firing into a cylinder, spraying fluid from a pressurized fuel rail in order to test the seals for any leaks and test the spray pattern. Here you can see the spray pattern test, which will indicate any blockages in the nozzles at the end of the injectors and could cause an irregular spray. 
There's also some variance in the inductance, and I believe that can cause some irregularity in the flow. Here you can see the six injectors cycling through and the spray pattern of each one. Here you can see I've slowed this down, so whilst it's still running at hundreds of RPM, the spray pattern is much more visible and the individual bursts from each injector are far more easy to spot. After the spray pattern, the next one is a flow test. This one runs for a set amount of time, wide open, and shows any discrepancy between each injectors and how much liquid they can actually flow for a given amount of time. You can see the injectors in port 1, 5 and 6 on the test rig are flowing slightly less than 2, 3 and 4. To clean the injectors they go into an ultrasonic bath and run for a set amount of time at various different frequencies in order to dislodge any debris inside. Before this is done the filters are taken out. The filters are a small plastic housing with a very fine mesh in order to filter the fuel as it goes through the injector so as not to clog any of the outlets. The filters themselves can degrade and they can get tears in as shown with this one here and they can also break down further than that with the actual framework of the mesh also coming apart. This can then create its own debris and block the injectors more and cause further problems. Fortunately none of these broken ones came out of my injectors the ones in mine look in reasonably good condition, but even with that, they're being replaced with these small metal mesh ones so that they will be harder to break down and as a result, less likely to clog the injectors in the same way that a plastic one with a plastic mesh might. Another test to verify that the injectors are working and that the cleaning process was a success. The inductance across all six is looking much more even, so the flow should be a lot more even also. And from the flow test we can see the difference between each one is closer to 1% than the 2.5% it was before. So thanks very much to Nick and all the guys at Decimal Tenths, Callum and Colin, who helped us out getting the head sorted and doing all the injector testing. So they are looking a lot better now. The injectors had a little bit of discrepancy across the flow. Um, the pattern looked reasonably good on the tester, as you saw, but now they've all been cleaned properly. They are looking way, way better, and they flow nominally exactly the same across all six of them, which is great news. And obviously, we got the head done. Now, these exhaust ports look so much better than they did before. These are really nice and clean. Um, I've given them just a quick wipe over with a little bit of 1200 grit sandpaper just to get rid of any more roughness where I can and they're looking a lot smoother than they were. I've also gone over the entire head all the way around and cleaned up all of the grime that I possibly can and it looks so much better than it did. And to do that all I used were these little um, stainless steel wire brushes that go in a Dremel. Cup one, a flat one and this little kind of I want to call it a drill, but it's not really a drill. It's just a very tight sort of like a like a paintbrush end, basically, to get in all of the uh, the close end bits. And they did a sterling job cleaning up all the front of this head. It's now not grimy at all, although it is apparently just a tiny bit oily still. <coughs> we uh, we definitely need to get more of this done, and it does look really really good. So hopefully, with a refreshed block as well and all of the components redone it's not going to look super duper shiny but it is going to look clean and hopefully it'll stay that way for quite a while if you'd like to keep up with the golf build and all of our other projects you should definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so you find out exactly when we put out new videos and if you'd like to support us in doing all of these projects you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy t-shirts like these with long sleeve and some short sleeve ones hoodies hats beanies and all sorts of other things or you can support us more directly by going to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and there you can support us from as little as a dollar a month and you can get access to our discord server from the five dollar tier up we'll see you next time thanks very much for watching <laughs>